Hi, this is Zach with Born and Wound. Today I'll be taking a look at the Bomberg 1968 Bullhead Chronograph. This is a new watch from a new brand uh, that is Swiss based with uh, an Asian made watch. Uh, we have two here, one with stainless steel case and one with a PVD case, and they cost $625 and $675 respectively. Both feature Miyota OS11 quartz chronograph uh, movements in them. Uh, and as you can see, they have a very unique and bold design. It's very aggressive. It's kind of a love it or hate it look. And uh, it's, you know, it's very interesting. We always love to feature watches that are you know, really unique, and I think this definitely is a unique watch. Uh, one caveat though is that these watches are not available in the US and they most likely won't be for a few years. Though I think for you know most intrepid watch collectors they're able to get any watch they want through forums and what have you. So let's take a closer look now. Clearly the most standout feature of the Bomberg 1968 is the extremely unique and uh, almost bizarre case design. Uh, so you know clearly it's a bullhead watch which means the crowns are at 12 um, which gives it that distinct kind of vintage late 60s early 70s look. You know some brands like Omega, Tissot, Seiko they all had bullhead watches that are inspired by you know automobile racing and that definitely comes through you know, obviously in the overall design, but especially in the case design of this watch. Uh, but it's a very bizarre design. So it actually comes in two sizes. Here we have the 44 millimeter, so that's 44 millimeter in diameter. But then otherwise, it's totally asymmetrical. So looking at it now from the side, you can see just how bizarre it really is. The top, you have these very short lugs, and the bottom, you have these very, very long lugs. So it's 54 millimeters from lug to lug, but because that's not centered, it doesn't really give you a true read. And because the watch is so uh, dramatically curved here, the way it sits on your wrist is a little bit different, frankly, than any other watch we've seen. Uh, but it is a very big, bold watch. Uh, it also has 22 millimeter lug widths here. But this isn't really a watch I think you could put any strap on because of how the straps are uh, fit into it. So it has a very distinct design. So this bottom strap fits in and is totally stiff and actually you know, can, fills this entire lug space here. But this top strap is loose and what that allows you to do is drop it down and then use the watch in kind of a uh, stopwatch form so you can actually hold it like that which is really cool and I think that's kind of the whole idea the original idea behind the bull has is to have this you know uh, capability so it's great that they kept that uh, now looking at some of the detailing on the case uh, overall it has actually very little finishing it's really just a lot of uh, kind of brushed steel, but uh, nothing too fancy. The only kind of standout detail is on these lugs. There is a, a beveled edge here with a little bit of a polish on it, which is nice. It breaks it up. I think especially on the steel model that's needed because this is really just a big slab of metal and it's kind of a little bit boring along the side here because there's just so much metal. Um, the the Construction of this though I think would have allowed for something a little bit more interesting. The case back as you can see here includes the lugs but then this whole part attaches to that so the lugs would come out. So you know I would think that they would have the potential to do a different finish on the case center from the lugs which would just you know make things a little bit more interesting a little bit less of a flat slab. Um, I'm going to just take a quick look at the PVD version that we also have. Uh, the PVD it, it, it's a more stealth looking, probably a little less vintage looking. Um, probably also also makes it feel a little bit more, uh, a little bit smaller as, you know, uh, Black Watch usually does. Um, it's very cool. You know, I mean, these watches, the case design alone, I think is a love it or leave it kind of a thing. It's very unique. Um, and I think it's, you know, definitely going to be a signature of this brand. To match the very unique case design, the, the dial of the uh, 1968 is very aggressive and um, it's very busy. You know, I, I, it kind of showed this watch around to a lot of people. Some people were like, wow, that's really cool. I really get it. Other people were just like, there's way too much going on for me. And I'll go through it now, but there is, you know, it's definitely a busy dial and it's definitely aggressive. I mean, that's just the nature of this brand and of their watches. Uh, so you have a very large index here that is um, all numerals, double digit numerals in this kind of geometric font that, um, you know, it's clearly just the minutes, but I think, you know, refers to, uh, you know, automobile dashboard. So you have that uh, racing aesthetic coming through here. Uh, they're oversized, they're very legible, and then in the center of the dial you actually have some more complicated things going on. So, you know, clearly it's a chronograph, uh, and you have the running seconds for the watch at 3 o'clock, then you have the 60 minute chronograph uh, register at 9 o'clock, and then in the center, and I'll actually start the chronograph here so it be a little more clear, is a sort of a reference to an hour index, but clearly it only shows 12 and 6 and then gets cut apart by these other dials. So it's 
more or less unnecessary. Um, the, there's a lot of actually changes in depth and texture, well not really texture, but just changes in depth here. So that whole inner index bridge is a secondary plate on the main dial. So you know, when we move around you can see that there's a little bit of an elevation change. And then some of these indexes are actually above the main dial and kind of uh, angled in, whereas others are flat. They just you know, tried to basically make each of the indexes distinguish from one another. Um, and you know, on this colorway, which black dial and, and just white text, you know, I think it's good to have those little uh, differences just to make things more di uh, different and unique. Um, one clever thing they did was they actually nestled the date in here underneath that circle. So it's, uh, it's very discreet, but it's there for your reference, um, which is cool. I actually didn't even notice it at first, and I was like, oh wow, there it is. Uh, and you know, they match the date uh, disk to the dial, which is also really, you know, a nice touch. Uh, around the very outer edge, you have a tachometer scale on this, uh, you know, chapter ring that goes around, you know, the inner bezel of the watch. Um, you know, once again, referring to racing and uh, that kind of thing. Now we'll take a look at the other color here that we have. Um, it's a very different look. It's a much lighter look, um, and I think actually a little bit more uh, have a kind of a little more of a vintage feel with this kind of minty green and um, orange hands, you know. It's, it's nice, I think it's almost a little clearer and you can probably actually see the changes in uh, the depth of the dial a little more here. Uh, so, you know, clearly this watch is a chronograph. Uh, so you have the start pusher here and reset pusher here, and I'll just show you how it works. So, you know, you click that and it goes, uh, like I said before, it's a Miyota OS11 chronograph movement. Um, it's, you know, it's fine. It's a quartz chronograph. Mechanical chronographs are, you know, much more expensive. So I think to keep this watch around $600, they had to use this movement. Um, but it doesn't really have the greatest tactile feel. So, you know, when you push it, when you start it, it just has a little bit of click. When you pause it, it has absolutely no click, which is kind of unsatisfying. Then when you reset it, um, you know, it's just also a little, it's a little click. I think that you know, I mean, that's probably more the movement than the watch, but it doesn't really have a satisfying feel to it. I also would love to have seen them use like something like a Seiko mechanical quartz, uh, mecha quartz chronograph, which just makes it a much more kind of a functional chrono chronograph. On the wrist, the 1968 uh, really wears like no other watch I've tried on, you know, so it cans up, as I said, so you kind of have this funny, uh, sense of it kind of coming out towards you, um, but then the way it sits, you know, clearly it's not really sitting on the center of my wrist, it's sitting back further, but it holds your wrist really well because of the curvature of the case, which, you know, I could just to remind you to show you, it goes like that. So it really hugs the skin of your wrist. Um, while on one hand it's ergonomic, it's almost too much so, I have to say. Like, uh, you kind of you don't know, I don't know if you want that much metal against your skin all the time because basically when you're wearing this watch you're very aware of it being on your skin. Um, it's also not, because the asymmetry feels a little bit like it's tilting at any given point. You know, it's very secure, it's not going anywhere, but you get this feeling like you want your wrist is, is turning. But, uh, you know, overall, I mean, if you wore it a lot, I'm sure you get used to that, just like you get used to the, the feeling of a very heavy watch. Um, but, you know, it's wild looking and uh, it definitely has a very dramatic, you know, uh, just, just shouts, you know, I mean, this watch is just exceptionally loud and, and, and cool looking, frankly. I mean, if you like the busyness um, and you're looking for a super aggressive sports watch, I mean, that there it is right there. Um, the strap it comes on is actually a very, I think there's a few straps that, that these watches come on, but the ones that we have here is these nice, you know, actually very soft, genuine leather straps that kind of uh, have a sense of a rally strap with the perforations on them that they don't go all the way through, which is actually kind of nice. It's a nice kind of a surface detail, um, a little bit different than anything I've seen before. Um, looking at the brown one here, probably even a little more clear. Um, it's a strange strap design, so it's very thin at the bottom. It gets very thick by this lug and it's very rigid here um, but the other side is just kind of a normal uh, normal thickness it's very soft though I mean it's a quality definitely a high quality strap one thing I really liked is that they kind of went above and beyond with their buckle design 
So it's a totally unique buckle with this kind of flaring shape and a big Bomberg logo on it. And as you can see, it really perfectly kind of sculpts to this to the strap as uh, it goes over your wrist. So that was just very, very nice, uh, high quality design there. So to wrap up, the Bomberg 1968 Bullhead Chronographs are extremely unique watches with a very different look that uh, I think is well executed for what it is, although it's, it's very busy and it's very dramatic. Um, for certain people, you know, you probably watched 15 seconds of this review and you knew you wanted it. Others who are on the fence, you know, you might always just stay on the fence. It's a, it's a divisive design. It's not meant for everyone. But it's very, I'm sure it's very appealing for people who want large watches, aggressive automobile, you know, focused watches, things of that nature. Uh, there are a couple of things I, you know, I wish were a little bit better. I wish the finishing on the case was a little bit more exciting. And I wish that the, the chronograph uh, button, buttons actuated with a little bit more of a tactile response. They just didn't really give you that satisfying click that we wanted to find. But for watches in this price range, 625 for steel, 675 for PVD, you know, I think that they're they're pretty fair. They're not going to let you down. I think they're they're well built watches, um, you know. And I think for something with such a dramatic, unique case design, the the price is actually pretty fair because uh, they're you're not finding anything like this from another brand. Uh, so please read the full review on WarnerWound.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you.